Good morning, afternoon, or evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. A coming to you yet again with another vlog. This is Chapter 4, it's Colonies Develop. Specifically, we're going to be looking at colonial economies. This is a slightly shorter presentation. Please make sure that you are writing all these notes down. And as always, at the end of this video, there's a vlog or a question that you need to put down in the comments, down in the doobly-doo, uh, to make sure that you are ready to go and for I can give you credit. So always, please make sure to sit back and relax write write your notes and then view this as many times as, as you many times that you need to make sure that you are ready to go so this is chapter four the colonial uh, the colonies develop uh, so if, we're going to begin by looking at the New England colonies which are New Hampshire Massachusetts Rhode Island and Connecticut if you still have your map you should already know that so the economy economy was mostly based off of substance farming, or uh, more or less the families would just farm enough just to feed themselves, not really to sell. Um, and that was mostly because the soil itself was too rocky and it was too cold. They had too long of a winter to actually grow crops that they could sell at the market. Uh, fishing was really big. If you look at where it's located, I mean, look at this. You got all this ocean over here. Very very good uh, fishing land. Uh, trade, they uh, also because being so close to the ocean, they traded with other colonies, with Europe. They were part of the triangular trade, which is on the next slide. Uh, they also they were so dependent on trade that even Great Britain, the ones who owned the colonies, uh, started getting to it with the Navigation Acts, saying who can show up in the colonies, who cannot, what can be traded, what cannot. So because of these Navigation Acts, we end up getting a increase in smuggling people bringing in items that they're not supposed to have or trading with people they're not supposed to and also ship buildings because of all the bays and all that they have so so much such good access to the ocean uh, so most of their economy was attached to that um, also during this time period you have decline of the Puritan religion because of trade other religions coming into the area and political changes when you have all of this going on and with the Puritans being so intolerant of the people who are different, uh, it makes sense that they're slowly but surely started disappearing from our society. Um, so from there we get to the triangular trade which has three parts. We're going to start right here uh, with this leg of the journey which is uh, from the Caribbean to New England. They brought sugar and uh, the sugar from their plantations down there would be turned into rum and they'd pick up other manufactured goods there and bring those down to Africa. In Africa, the kings and queens of the African kingdoms down there, uh, what they would do, they would take the rum and other goods and trade them for their own people or for their enemies. So more or less, they would enslave their own people for a good time. It's a party with rum, maybe some, some guns, some weapons, silverware. They like that type of stuff. So from there, they would go on what's known as the Middle Passage right here, which is because it's right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So the, the slaves would come to the to the Americas. So um, that was considered the worst part of the the whole triangular trade, and uh, mostly because of how they dealt with slaves and how they actually stacked them up one on top of another on top of another with maybe about uh, two feet between each other as they were stacked, and they just leave the dying, the dead, the sick right there. If, if when it was time to eat, they just throw food on them. Uh, really, really kind of horrible stuff. Uh, from there, we get to the middle colonies, which are Pennsylvania, New York, Delaware, New Jersey. Um, the, the economy, like its people, is extremely diverse. They had a wealth of resources. They were able to farm. They had coal. They had timber, lumber. Uh, so, And because of the longer growing season, they were able to grow cash crops or crops that were just meant to be sold at the market. Uh, and the grist mill, which was this big, huge mill that took all the wheat, all the corn that they were making, and they turned it into flour so that they could bake it and sell that. Uh, they could sell the flour itself, or they could even distill it to rum or whiskey or another uh, style of alcoholic beverage. Uh, also, because of the economy, you get large cities growing up around these major trade centers. Places like New York, New York, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and stuff like that. Um, their people were a different, very diverse, lots of different groups of people living in the same area. Because of all the different people going in and out, in and out, they were very tolerant of different ethnicities and religions. And all the people that moved in were Germans, so they were called, they were German artisans to be specific. And these were people 
who had a trade. They were blacksmiths, goldsmiths, uh, carpenters who came over to the Middle Colonies and became extremely wealthy. And because of the, all this tolerance in the Middle Colonies, they had very, very few slaves. Because when you tolerate the people who are different, there's no point to have all, that, all those slaves there. And from there, we're going to move on to the Southern Colonies, uh, which are Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Their economy was all based off of cash crops that were labor-intensive, stuff like indigo, tobacco, rice, cotton a little bit later. Uh, because of them needing so much labor, they depended on slaves. Um, so the planter class, which was the very high elite, very at the top, they controlled most of the land, the politics, and the slaves. Uh, the slaves themselves were controlled by these people called overseers, which more or less were slaves that were put into management. And what this does, this reduces uh, the ability for slaves to get together because it increases conflict in their communities. Though, because of this conflict, though there were very few uh, rebellions, but there were some, like the Stono Rebellion in uh, South Carolina. You also, this area also had what was known as the Tidewater, which is the land near the sea that was very low level, and it had a lot of good soil for uh, plantation and other farming. From there, we get to the back country, which is the area near the Appalachian Mountains and or the fall line. And what I mean by the fall line is when there is when there are mountains and you get uh, heavy weather, rain, snow, the mountains create what is known as a fall line. So that means some of the water will fall to one side, some of the water will go to the other side. And that's how we get these beautiful uh, areas like this, these really nice uh, lakes and valleys right by the mountains. The economy was mostly based off of fur traders and small farms. Um, they had very, very little way to actually get things to other places because uh, the trade routes weren't developed. The people were mostly the Scots-Irish. They, they came over in their clans or more or less groupings that are slight, that are related to each other. Um, we also ended up more contact with the Native Americans. Uh, and we also started to spread horses all across North America. No, horses weren't originally here. And when the Spanish brought them, and then the, then the English after and the French, some of the horses got loose. So what happened is the, the Native Americans ended up taking them. So the whole idea of a Native American on horseback with a war whoop chasing down bison and buffalo would not have happened if it was not for European contact. Uh, they also had contact with other European powers like France and Spain. Um, and the life itself... Because it was so difficult to get goods because of the because there was no trade routes, they had to depend on themselves. Um, and so, if you needed new shoes, you had to make them. If you needed a new roof, you had to do it. Uh, nothing really came in; everything was made there. Uh, so, for this vlog, make sure that you answer uh, you complete this down in the comments, or as I like to say, the doobly doo. Uh, so, as always. Make sure that you put your uh, name and your period for full credit. And please do not copy because I'm getting quite a bit of that down there in uh, the discussion. And I'm just giving out zeros for that. So be aware. So in the comment question, create two, and I do mean two, thought-provoking questions that deal with colonial economies. That's what's based off. So as remember to make sure to get that vlog done uh, for your credit, for your, for your uh, homework. And as always, don't forget to be awesome.